our event handler is all put together, so let's now flip over to the browser and test this code out. Over inside of Chrome, I'm going to make sure that I do a hard refresh on this page. We have imported a couple of different files here, and sometimes the next hot module reload doesn't handle that quite correctly. So I'm going to make sure that entire refresh goes through. Then before we attempt to submit the form, there's one other quick thing that I would like you to check. Up inside of our address bar, I'm going to find the MetaMask plugin, and I'm going to open it up. I just want you to make sure that you see a screen like this appear. If you see something that says like, enter your password to unlock your account, please make sure that you enter your password and unlock your account. If your account is locked when you try to submit this transaction, you're just going to end up seeing an error message down here. Once your account is unlocked, do also make sure that you've got the RinkBead test network selected as well. Okay, so let's now test this thing out. I'm going to enter in a minimum contribution of 100, and then I'll click on Create. And with any luck, oops, I kind of tabbed away from it. There we go. With any luck, we should see our MetaMask transaction confirmation screen appear right here. Notice that MetaMask has automatically recommended a gas amount for the transaction. Now, in this case, I don't want to submit the transaction just yet. Instead, I want to show you some interesting behavior. So I'm going to click on Reject right here. And when I do so, you'll notice that we get a big nasty error message in the console. Now there's something else I want to show you as well. I want to try deleting the number in there, and I'm going to replace that number with some basically gibberish input, like so. I think you'll agree with me that there's really no way, shape, or form that this could be construed as being a number of any sort. So let's now click on Create again and see what happens. So when we do that, we get another error message, and it's telling us hey, something, 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 this has got to be like an integer, a hex string, or something else. Basically, you didn't give us a number. So it definitely appears that although maybe everything is working here correctly, you know, we haven't actually submitted a transaction just yet, maybe it's working, maybe it's not, we'll figure that part out. But what's much more important is the fact that we appear to have no ability right now to notify our users when they do something wrong. Like, what happens if a user enters in 100.54, you know, something way or something like that. Let's see what happens in this case. Again, we get a nasty error message. So I think that we should really make sure that we communicate our failures in submitting this transaction back to the user so that they understand exactly what's going on with the submittal process. The other thing that I want to make sure that we eventually do is to make sure that when a user actually does submit a transaction, we should show some type of spinner on this form. Something to say to the user, hey, okay, like we're processing this, just hold up for a second, we'll eventually solve this issue, like we'll eventually finish the transaction. So in other words, I think we not only need to address some amount of form validation, but I think we also need some built-in waiting mechanism to show our users. This, these are both topics that I've been harping on throughout this entire course. Something to say, look, for a usable Ethereum application, we have to tell our users what's going on. Because if we don't do that, they're going to think that our entire application is broken and it's just not working at all. And that's going to make everybody leave our app, which is definitely not what we want at all. So let's start taking care of form validation and making sure we get in some spinners while we're submitting the transaction. And we'll start all that in the next video.